Hey guys, happy Thursday. I have an amazing video for you today. I'm gonna to be talking about attracting your ideal clients and how you do this and what might be going on for you that if you find that you're not attracting the right clients, you find you're attracting people who are not ready to invest, not ready to put in the work, they're not showing up, they're not really committed, um, they're not following through, they're maybe not really um, giving 100%, like they're distracted. I wanna talk a bit about what's going on, why you're attracting these clients, and what you can do to make some changes to actually start attracting the people you really want to be working with. This is such an important topic because a lot of people don't really understand what is going on and why this is happening. And there's some things that are going to really open your eyes a bit to what, what actually is going on and to give you some steps that you can start taking to shift this. So if you hop on and say hello, you may notice I am in a different spot. It's sounding a little echoey. I hope it doesn't echo on there. Good morning, Shannon. Good morning, Karen. Um, so I'm in Denver. I just moved and I'm actually in the process of packing again to head on a month of travels. So I'll be heading to Wisconsin, Boston, Italy, um, and I'll be able to take my business with me since it's mobile, which is pretty amazing. Um, but that's what I've been getting ready for. So this week has been a little a little crazy, but it's all been good. What, what I find happens for people when they are, um, when they're starting their business is that a lot of times when they're starting or when they're getting clients, um, a lot of times they're, they're saying what's happening is that people are saying, oh, it's too expensive, I don't have the time, it's not gonna fit into my budget, um, it's not the right time, I have too many things going on, um, it won't work, like what if it doesn't work for me, can you guarantee me the results, um, I need permission from my partner to do it or I need them to totally support me and be on board with it. Um, and a lot of times people will be working with clients too maybe that are showing up late, they're distracted on the calls, they're not following through with what you guys had talked about that they were gonna do. Um, they might be upset about their lack of results and maybe even like blaming it on you and feeling argument, or like showing up argumentative to you, like not really open and willing to try new things. So those are some of the things that I hear happen to people when they're working with clients. Um, especially in the beginning when you're getting started and you haven't really like understood like who your ideal client is and how to speak to that person and how to bring that person in. So if any of those things you can relate to, let me know. Give me a little a wave in the comments um, because I hear it all the time and I know because I've had this experience as well. So I want to talk about like why this is happening because there's actually like real reasons why this is happening and there's things that you can do differently so that it doesn't continue to happen, so that you can actually get those people you really wanna be working with. So what is the shift you can make to go from attracting people who aren't really the right fit, they're not really ready, they're not really gonna do the work um, and get great results to people who are, okay? Um, so, and you're having fall weather, nice. Hey, Ani. Yes, it, I couldn't share it at first, so if you were in my group, you can always catch the video on my business page as well. When I go live, that's really like the best place to catch it, but um, if it's in my group, sometimes I have problems sharing it, so that's what happened today. Um, okay, so what the number one thing I want you to do is to stop, a lot of us like start blaming our clients or blaming like the potential clients that are coming to us, and we're like, uh, these people, they're so annoying, like they're showing up in this way, like they're not ready, they're not willing to invest. And what I want you to do instead is to shift responsibility to taking responsibility for the people you're attracting and asking what can I do differently to start attracting the people I want to be working with, okay? Because if you start like blaming and getting angry about it, it's taking the power out of your hands and you can't do anything about it. But when you start taking responsibility and you're like, okay, what can I do differently? 
that's going to take the give you the power back to start making changes so you can attract those clients that you really want to be working with okay so it's all about us like taking responsibility for what's going on not getting upset about it not being like everyone sucks <laughs> which sometimes a lot of us feel like that when we're getting frustrated um but that doesn't help you as far as moving forward okay um hey john good morning so I'm gonna give you, I actually have a list of five things that I've gone through that I really find are the things that you can look at when this is happening and the shifts that you can make, okay? So number one is really looking at your beliefs. So your beliefs around the fact that people won't pay a certain price, they won't invest in their health, they won't invest in their personal growth, they won't invest in coaching, um, they don't have the money to invest in coaching, and I'm talking about your beliefs, your beliefs about this, okay? Because if you have these beliefs, um, they are gonna be reflected back to you in the clients that you're attracting. Our business is always a mirror of what is going on for us, um, so if you have these beliefs, you're gonna hear them back from the people you're attracting, okay? Some of the other ones, if you believe your price is too high or you think you don't really feel good about your price or you're like, it's not worth it, um, people can't afford it, I'm greedy if I charge this, um, I should be doing it for free or I should be doing it for really cheap so that people can, you know, so that people can afford it. Um, so those are big ones. The other ones I see is like, telling yourself that you're not qualified, that you don't know what you're talking about, that you can't help people get results, or you're afraid you can't help people get results, um, or that you don't know enough. When you have these beliefs, you're gonna attract people that are reinforcing that belief, okay? So you have to look at these own beliefs that you have going on about you and your coaching. If you aren't feeling confident about what you have to offer, you're not feeling good about the fact that you can really help people, um, and I know in the beginning it can be a little tricky because it's new, right? Um, but you have to really like go through your program and recognize like either you've gone through it or maybe even run some people through it for free or you know whatever you need to do. Although just know when you run people through it for free, they may not be totally committed. But at least it's going to help boost, boost your confidence as far as your coaching and being able to work with people and helping them get results. And I would go through and recognize like the own res your own results that you've gotten in your life and your changes, okay? Um, but it's really important that you show up and that you are confident in your pricing and your program and that you can help people and that you can help people get results. Because if you're not, you're just gonna see that reflected back to you. And a lot of people will start going out there and looking for clients, but they don't really want clients because of the lack of confidence. And they're scared that when they actually get a client, they won't be able to help them or they're gonna say the wrong thing or you know whatever it is. So I just want you to be really aware for you, like do you have any of these beliefs going on for yourself? And if you do, that's probably why they're getting thrown back to you when you have people come to you. Like they're re, they're, they're saying your beliefs to you, okay? So just be aware of that. So if you're hearing like patterns of things that people are saying, what are those patterns? Write those down and then look at your beliefs that you have that are reinforcing those patterns, okay? So that's number one. Number two is integrity. And this is super important and truthfully, I see it quite a bit, a, a loss of integrity with coaches. And um, the thing, so integrity, I wanna give you the definition. I, I looked it up, I think it was on like dictionary.com. Um, so it said the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. And where this shows up is that as a coach, you want to be an example of what you want to attract in your clients, okay? So if you are attracting a lot of people who aren't willing to invest in coaching, I would ask, are you willing to invest in coaching yourself, okay? And are you willing to invest in your business? Because if you aren't willing to invest in your business, why should people invest in working with you, all right? So I think these are important things to look at and they're just showing you some things that you may be overlooking yourself. 
Um, the other thing is, yeah, like, have you worked with a coach yourself? Are you willing to work with a coach yourself? Like, how can you really be telling other people that they should work with a coach and invest in a coach if it's something you're not willing to do? So I would really look at that. It's a big one. Um, showing up on time, um, like if you schedule a call with someone coming to it, um, being fully present, not being distracted. Are these things that you do yourself in your life? Do you show up on time for events? Are you fully present for the things that you sign up for? These are things that you need to look at yourself and are you doing them in your life and in the things that you're doing? And if you're not, you're gonna attract clients that do the same thing. Do you not follow through on payments? Do you say you're gonna or sign up for something and then you flake out on paying for the whole program or you stop halfway through or you know whatever it is like if you do these things in your life it's most likely that you're going to attract people that do the exact same thing so i want you to have really high standards for yourself so that you attract clients that have high standards as well okay so really be aware of these things i'm not like calling you out to try to make you feel bad if this is if you're like oh yeah i do these things but i just want you to be aware of them so that you can be like oh yeah these are things that i'm doing in my life in certain places and that's why i'm attracting people that do the same thing okay is that making sense to you guys <laughs> does does either of those things like kind of bring up anything for you and are you aware of like beliefs you have or places where you know maybe you're not showing up totally and that's getting reflected back to you and the clients you're attracting i would just like reflect on that because it can be super powerful to see this okay um so a few okay so integrity is number two number three knowing who your ideal client is and knowing how to speak to this person and being really specific about who this person is and always speaking to that person, okay? So a lot of people don't understand how to write copy, how to write marketing. Um, and so uh, what you need to learn is like how to do this, okay? It's new for a lot of us and that's okay. We don't really understand like how to speak to a person in a way that, um, a lot of times we're coming from like coach lingo. It's what a lot of times people see. They're using like coach lingo, lingo where they're like, I'm gonna happy, help you live a happy life and um, to you know feel free and peaceful and whatever. Like that's all fine and great, but we really need to like break it down into your client's words and speak to them in a way that really resonates with them and is showing them that you can help them with what it is that they're struggling with and you can help them get the results, the like real concrete results that they want in their life, okay? Because for a lot of us, like yes, feeling more free and happy and you know, all that stuff is great, but we're always looking at what's that concrete result that we want in our life to help us feel that way because we think that we need that thing to feel that way, which you may know is, is not the case. Um, but you need to be speaking to your client in their words and in their, in their thinking. So really like understanding this is going to help you so much because you can start marketing in a way that really speaks to your ideal client, where they're at right now, what's going on for them and allowing them to know that you can help them with that thing and help them get the results. Um, and, oh, the other thing is when you're when you're marketing, when you're writing, or when you're um, doing videos or whatever it is, like really qualifying the people. And you can use this, like this is who I work with. I work with these people. Um, or this is who I don't work with. I don't work with these people. And really letting people know, like I work with people who they're committed, they're ready to show up and do the work, they're you know ambitious, they're ready to leave their excuses behind. Like you can talk about that stuff in your marketing and that's letting people know like, okay, this is, this is who she works with. And if this isn't me or I'm not in that place, I'm not the right, I'm not the right person. Okay. So a lot of times people are kind of wishy-washy in their marketing because they don't really own it and they're not afraid. They're not willing to kind of get out there and say it. This is the other thing, like being confident in your marketing, right? If you're, if you're putting out marketing that isn't super confident and you're kind of you're putting out like kinda, sorta, I might be able to help you, you know, kind of those vibes behind it 
and you're not really confident about what you're putting out there, people are going to feel that energetically, right? Like you're not, you wouldn't want to work with some sort of professional or a doctor or whoever who's like, I kind of might be able to help you with this. You'd be like, all right, see you later. Like I'm going to someone else who knows they can, right? So um, really understanding how to speak to your ideal client and being confident in that marketing and how to communicate to people, super important. Um, makes sense, Ani. Okay, awesome. Let me see what you're saying, Dana. Notice when you dropped that kind of language and started using health practi practitioner language, people started to see you as more as a health practitioner than a coach. Yeah, and the thing is, like, there's being direct about it, but still, like, actually in your marketing, you want to be using, like, your client's words, their words, and really their terminology and speaking to them in a way that really resonates with them okay like that's the thing about really good copy really good marketing like you really understand your ideal client and you can like use their words um but bringing that confidence behind it too is like super important um yes i can i will i do language makes a huge difference absolutely um so own it own your expertise like you guys all have like amazing things to offer people and you really want to own that when you're putting it out there, okay? All right, so, oh, and really communicating the value of what you have to offer. Like, I think it's really important for you to understand the value of what you have to offer, but then also to communicate that, right? So if you're helping someone with, let's say, example, losing weight, like, what is the value of that to them? Like, how is it going to change their life? How many different ways is it gonna change their life? Like, how many different years is it gonna change their life? I mean, it could change their life from now until they die, you know, and, and how many different ways, like how, how many different areas of their life, their career, their part, their um, relationships, their health, like how is it changing it? Like understand the value of the transformation and communicate that in the marketing that you're doing as well, okay? So number four is getting in front of the right people. Um, when it comes to marketing, a lot of people don't understand how to get traffic, okay? So traffic is people who are interested in what it is you have to offer and building up your community, building up the people who are seeing you, finding you. Um, and so what I teach is a way to get your messaging in front of the people who are looking for what you have to offer, okay? Um, and in, so the difference between this is, is getting your message in front of people who are ready looking for the solution that you have versus trying to convince people that they should change and convince people that they should do your program or convince people that they should work with you. There is no convincing necessary, all right? Like that isn't good energy to be in. You don't want to be trying to convince people that they need what you have or that they should work with you. Um, you want to be getting your stuff in front of the people who are ready, like willing, they're hungry for what you have to offer. They're like excited about it. They're like, oh my gosh, where has this been my whole life? Like I've been searching for this answer and here you are. Like that's what you want to do. You want to get your stuff in front of those people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm going to start doing a little dance. Um, no, but it, it like makes such a huge difference if you're in front of the right people. I hear so many people are like, I'm trying to convince everyone or I feel like I have to convince people to work with me. Like, don't do that. Those aren't your people, okay? There's no convincing. You, you can't help people that aren't ready and willing to do the work. You just can't. You can only help people that are ready, willing, they're ready to invest, they're ready to do it. They're like, Shh, help me. I'll do whatever it takes. Like those are the people you want to be working with, right? Um, so that's a big one, okay? And there's lots of marketing that you can do um, that gets you in front of those right people, okay? It's just a matter of understanding really like how to market effectively. And one of the things I teach is, is Facebook ads because they're like an amazing, awesome tool for getting you in front of those people who are ready looking for it. So that way you don't have to be trying to convince your friends and your family and everyone to be your clients, which nothing wrong with that. Like if you have people who are in your circle who want to work with you, that's amazing. But once you get through that circle, then it's like, okay, who, who else? 
Um, and this is how we start building like a sustainable business for you is by getting you in front of those people. Okay. So I have one more for you. Okay. So number five is learning how to coach through resistance. So most people that you do, that you are going to coach with are going to have some form of resistance to signing up to work with you. Um, usually around, I mean, the biggest one is money resistance, money resistance, or like time or timing. And so this is going to come up for people and it's human nature because as humans, we don't like to change. It's kind of scary. It's intimidating. And so typically our brain is going to throw up some sort of resistance when it comes to making a change. And so it's totally normal for when you have consultations with people for them to bring up concerns about the investment or concerns about, do I have enough time for this? Um, or can I really get the results? And as a coach, what you want to be able to do is coach them through that resistance. Okay. Show them like why, why those thoughts are coming up for them and help them see through them, help them move through them. Okay. Um, because a lot of people do lose a lot of potential clients because as soon as that resistance like pops up for people, which a lot of times it will, they're just like, Oh, okay. You don't want to do it. You know? And they just like, hang up the phone or whatever. And you don't want to do that. You want to be able to actually like, this is a really powerful opportunity for you to actually coach people through that. Okay. Um, and so use that opportunity. It's, it can be such an amazing time to actually do really powerful coaching for people. And that's the one time on a call where you do really want to coach as far as on a, um, like a consultation call too. So do you guys have any questions about any of this? But those five things would make a, are going to make a huge difference as far as the people that you're attracting, okay? And the whether those people are a good fit or they're just like, you're like, these are totally not the right people. So there's so much that you can do on your end to attract those right people. And if you go through those five steps, it's going to make, like a, it's going to make a huge difference for you. Promise, okay? But let me know if you guys have any questions at all about any of this, about clients, where to find them, how to attract the right people, about things that you are maybe getting stuck with with your clients or the people you're attracting. Um, and then I'll say like, if this is something you want support with and you want help with finding those right people and kind of working through the beliefs that might be keeping you stuck attracting people who are not a right fit, those are the things that I really work with people on and we go through like step by step, like how do you get out in front of those right people? How do you get that amazing traffic who's already looking for what it is you have to offer? How do you communicate what it is you have to offer so that it's very clear and you're showing the value and you're speaking to that right person? Um, how do you work through those objections when they come up on, on consults with people? Like we go through all that stuff step by step. So super helpful when it comes to actually getting those paying clients. Okay. So if you're interested in that, sign up for a call with me. I will put a link in the video. Um, and other than that, do you guys have any questions? If you do pop them in, if you catch the replay and you have questions, pop them in as well. And I will answer them. And soon you'll be i'll be sharing things from wisconsin i'll be in boston i will be in italy so i'll be sharing videos and stuff so if you're not following me already on instagram facebook follow me because i'll be posting some awesome photos hopefully no i'm sure i will so all right if you guys don't have any questions i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up um go through these things they will be a game changer for you if you go through them and you're like this is where i'm getting stuck type it in the comments and we can go through it um, so, so that you don't continue to get stuck there. But thank you everyone so much for joining me. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Ani, let me see what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Facebook stalking. So that's one of the things that I, I teach a little bit is to do some Facebook stalking, but the thing about our ideal clients, I usually say like, how do you know that this is an ideal client? One of the things for me is it's like someone I'd want to be friends with, right? I'm like, my ideal client is like, I, I look at their profile on Facebook. I'm like, 
I would totally be friends with this person. This person looks awesome. So that's one of the things too. Like obviously they they have the thing the qualities that you're looking for as far as they need support with what it is you help people with. But as far as like the person and the personality, a lot of times it's like someone I'd be like, I'd be friends with this person. So it can be super helpful. Um, I will post my Instagram link and I thank you for the, the have fun wishes. I will definitely have fun. That I'm, I'm certain of. So glad it was helpful, Ani. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, even if it pops up later, feel free to add it in the comments and I will, I will get back to you and answer them. Um, so I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. I'm headed off on a plane well, this afternoon, so, um, but I will see all you guys soon. Bye guys. Thanks for joining.